so that uh, God can bless the word that he has given us and uh, can speak to our hearts so that we can be able to understand what exactly he wants us to do. So we'll pray. Let's close our eyes. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come before this, this afternoon, giving you all the glory and honor. Lord, we say thank you for the day. We say thank you that we, you have seen it fit, oh Lord, for us to be here. We say, oh Lord, we, we are grateful and we honor you. Father, <laughs> Father, we pray, oh Lord, that uh, for the message that you have given us today, we pray, oh Lord, that you may prepare our hearts. Oh Lord, that anything that you have set aside for us to, to, to consume for this day, oh Lord, that our hearts may be receptive, that you may give us understanding, we come against every spirit of destruction, every spirit that seeks to keep us away from your word. We pray, oh Lord, that, Lord, may you take over, may you take precedence. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Now, our message today is the 21st century Christian, a hope to the city, a hope to the world. The message today is to remind us all that we are a hope to these nations, a hope to the community that we live in, and also it's also a call to reflection. It's to reflect that, to understand what, what, what it means to actually be Christian and what God wants from us. Amen? Amen. Okay. Now, when they told me that I'll be preaching today, I was full of excuses. I told them, I told them, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. I told them, you know what, I'm new. I'm just coming. I'm new to Chicago. I'm not that brave. I've never done it. And I told them that. And then the Lord spoke to me later and told me, just as I was with Moses, Moses gave me the same excuses as you. He told me that I must turn around. I can't speak, I can't say anything. What will I tell them? Who sent me? And God told me, you go, I'll be with you, I'll tell you what to say. Amen. And Amen. I'll, treat, I'll talk to my people, I'll prepare their hearts. Amen. And I, when I thought about it, I was encouraged, I said, okay, I have no more excuses, I'll go and do it. Amen. And that's our God. He's the same yesterday, today, tomorrow, and, and that's why we serve him, because he never changes. Okay? Now, I will give my message uh, today with a few comments about the world we live in. The world today, the 20, like uh, from the topic, is the 21st century. What, 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 the kind of, what the kind of society that we have found ourselves into this day. And uh, I'll begin with that. We live in a treacherous time. We, the writing is on the wall. It's for everybody to see that uh, the happenings around us all point to the fulfillment of the prophecies that we have in the Bible. Like uh, we are reminded in Luke chapter 21, verse 31, it says, even when you see these things, even when you see these things happening, you know that the kingdom of God is near and true to the one. We live in the end times. Everything around us points us to the end of this world and the coming back of Christ. The question becomes, what kind of a world will Christ find? What kind of a person will God find you be? That's the, that's, the, that's the question right now. So it's not about that when is God coming? God is coming soon. And he's, he's clearly told us, he's prepared us in advance. He's told us that when you say these things, know that my time is near. And that's what's, uh, what's happening right now. The world, the world is degrading and day by day human beings are becoming more and more godless. We seem to be trying to find new ways of sinning. As if already whatever we had is not bad enough, we're still finding ourselves trying to look for newer ways to sin which is distressful to the world. And God will surely punish the world at the due time. God is a patient God. He, he is a loving God. He is slow to anger. But do not forget that the Lord is a consuming fire. Amen. 
And that's why people, the Bible teaches us to be fearful of the Lord. We fear him and love him in reverence to who he is. And that is a consuming fire. We, we, the world, like uh, everywhere around us, people are trying to rid themselves of God. They're becoming more and more godless. It's all about me. It's all about myself. It's about my people, my family. It's about this time, how good I feel. And God, where does God fit in in all that? So most of the time we found that the world right now, there's been a corrosion of morals and spirituality. There's too much godlessness. In his article, uh, like a, I would, uh, would quote uh, in the article titled, uh, My Heart Aches for America, Billy Graham writes, Some years ago, my wife Ruth was reading the draft of a book I was writing. When she finished a section describing the downward spiral of our nation's moral standards and the adultery of, false, of worshiping false gods such as technology, and sex. She settled me by exclaiming, if God does not punish America, he will have to apologize to Sodom and Gomorrah. She was probably thinking of a passage in Ezekiel where God tells us why he brought those cities to ruin. And that passage is in Ezekiel 16, verse 9 to 15, where God says, now this is the sin, this is the scene of Sodom. She and her daughters were arrogant, overfed, and unconcerned. Does that seem similar to you? Because for me, it does feel similar to me. That's the world around us. We overfed. Like a few weeks ago, we had a, the sermon was, we keep on accumulating things. We accumulate things that we even have, we don't have space to put them in our houses. We have to put them in storage. <laughs> And probably will never, will never use them. Right. We, we, we accumulate even more. Leave aside what, what we have in storage. Let's say we have in storage something. That is useful, serves the same purpose, but because there's a new one. I have to get that. That new one is what I want. And you find the difference is minimal, you know. But we still accumulate. All right, we continue. They did not help the poor and needy. They were haughty and did, and did detestable things before me. Therefore, I did away with them, as you have said. The Lord is a consuming fire, as we say. He can do away with, he, with us human beings. We are mere mortals. He can do away with us as he pleases. But because of his mercies, God keeps on being with us keeps on giving us chances after chances after chances. We, we say sometimes even willful, and then we go back to him and tell him, God, I'm sorry. He washes us, cleanses us, gives us a new start. But we still do the same thing that we did yesterday. Anyway, as I read this passage in the Bible, I could not help notice the similarity between the world we live now and the description of Sodom and God. We as Christians live in this world. We go through everything as everybody does, but there needs to be a difference. There needs to be a difference between us and Sodom. Unless God will do away with us, because he's just. He's just, because he cannot treat us any different. If he treats Sodom any different from us, then God is not just. Because he says in his word that he, he searches the heart and he will pay every man according to his dues. And that makes him God. That makes him just. It's not partial. We, don't, we are not any special. If we follow him, he blesses us. If we, if we go against him, he will surely punish us. That's the world. That's God. That's, and given that we're living in the end times, and these times of the world, there needs to be a difference. Yes. There needs to be a difference. Something must identify us as Christians. Mm -hmm. Something must set us aside. Mm -hmm. And that we 
are not the same as everybody else. So what is the role of Christians in this world? What is the role of Christians in the end times? In Matthew 5, 13 to 16, the Bible teaches us, you are the salt of the earth. All right? Anybody? If you have your Bible, you can open to five, Matthew 5, 13 to 16. Everybody there? <clears throat> okay. It reads, you are the salt of the world, but if salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. We, we are the salt that is being talked about in Matthew. We are the salt of this world. But if we give in to the, the world and its ways, we lose our saltiness. If we lose Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters, if we lose Jesus Christ, we are like salt that has lost its saltiness. We will be good for will not be good for anything. We will be like that branch that Jesus says will be cut off and thrown into the fire. Because we, we don't have use. What's your role? You can't say that you belong to God and still the world. Darkness and light will never walk in the same way. One, one will push out the other. So, as Christians, we are the salt. And we must make sure that we hold on to Jesus Christ and his teachings to ensure that we remain, we remain salty. So that Christ, that when God looks at us, he can be proud. He can say, I have some remnants. These are the remnants the Bible keeps on talking about. That during the end times, as everything is turning towards the Antichrist, towards the devil, there will be people who will stand and say that I and my house will follow the Lord. And those are the remnants that God keeps on looking for. He keeps on looking for. So that even if, and those are the people who keep the anger of the Lord from extinguishing the earth. Because when he sees, when he sees the world, he sees the, those few, he sees you, you and you, he says, those are my people. I cannot destroy them. He keeps, it keeps his anger away. Like, uh, we, we go back, uh, I'll, read, I'll read again whatever I was reading for today, just to illustrate how God views the righteous people. His righteous people. We go back again in Genesis 18, 17 to 33. Then the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am about to do? Abraham will, sh will surely become a great and powerful nation, and all nations on earth will be blessed through him. For I have chosen him so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just, so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he has promised to him. I would like to be Abraham. I would like to be like him. Who would you want that the Lord is looking to destroy the world, but he cannot keep you into himself? Like, that's, that guy, that's my person. I'm going to tell him what I'm about to do. I love God to tell me that. Tell me that. I'm about to destroy the world, but I have to tell you. We continue. Verse 20. The Lord said, The outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is so great, that their, and their sin is so grievous, that I will go down and see if what they have done is as bad as the outcry that has reached me. If not, I will know. The men turned away and went towards Sodom. But Abraham remained standing before the Lord. This is the point where Abraham was pleading with the Lord for the sake of Sodom. And Abraham approached him and said, Will you sweep away the righteous with the wicked? It brings us back again. If God does that, that doesn't make him just. He cannot sweep the righteous with the wicked. 
continue. What if there are 50 people in the city? Will you sweep away and not spare the place for the sake of the 50 precious people in it? Far be it from you to do such a thing, to kill the righteous with the wicked, treating the, right, treating the righteous and the wicked alike. Far be it from you, will, will not the judge of all the earth do right? Then the Lord said, if I find 50 righteous people in the city of Sodom, I will spare the whole place for their sake. If I find, for their sake, sorry, verse 27, then Abraham spoke again. Now, now that I have been so bold to speak to, to speak to the Lord, that I am nothing but dust and ashes. What if the number of precious people is five, less than 50? Will you destroy the whole city for the lack of five people? If I find 45 people there, he said, I will not destroy it. Once again, he's, once again he spoke to him, what if 40 are found there, he said. For the sake of 40, I will not do it. Then he said, may the Lord not be angry, but let me speak. What if only 30 can be found there? Then he said, I will not do it if I find 30 there. Abraham said, now that I have been so bold to speak to the Lord, what if only 20 can be found there? He said, for the sake of 20, I will not destroy it. Then he said, may the Lord not be angry, but let me speak just once more. What if 10 can be found there? He answered, for the sake of 10, I will not destroy it. My own, my, my own observation from this is, if Abraham had the courage and was sure that God would not get angry with him, he would have continued until one remained. And I think the Lord would have said, if I find one righteous person, I will not destroy it, given the trend that we've seen. That's true. Yeah. Okay. So, the one person, the one remnant, the one Christian who truly follows Christ can save an entire city, can save an entire world. That, that, that encourages me as a Christian, how special I am to God. Amen. That he will see me and say, I forgive their transgressions no matter how grievous it is. That's the hope we have as Christians. Yes. We as Christians, it's only that we have no idea who we are. Amen. Even the Bible teaches us that we will step on scorpions and they will not scorch us. But we, we, we keep on walking like everybody else, defeated. We keep on being fearful that we cannot speak even when injustice goes on in the world. We Christians need to remember who we are and who we serve. Because who we serve is greater than he that is in the world. Amen. So why do we call to the one in the world? And we have, we have the backing of the greatest person, the greatest power we've ever seen. Things we can only imagine. The, a person who can, not even a person, I can't even call him a person. Somebody who can create the whole world by the word of his mouth. That will be a finger. If that's the person backing us, we should go out boldly to the world. Amen. We should subdue it and rule it Amen. and conform it to the ways of Jesus Christ. Amen. Continue. Well, in Corinthians 6.17, the Bible says, just a minute, before we get there, but there's a, there's a condition as to why, as to how we should live. God gives us that. If we are, if we are, to, if we are the Christians who are going to subdue the earth and remain his people, he gives us conditions on how to live in the world. Because God understands what we go through. God understands that we walk like everybody else, understands the injustices that goes in every other day. And he actually sees them. But he says that he will come and pay us rightfully our dues. Then, so he has, so the question becomes, how do we live as Christians in these times so that God can see us as precious? In Corin now, we get to Corinthians 6.17, the Bible says, Therefore, come out of them 
and be separate. <coughs> Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you. I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters. Well, that's what God said, tells us. He's telling us. Be different. Be different. You don't have to, you don't separate yourself and separate yourself that we are Christians, we, 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 we live here only, we shop here only. It's not that. It's just saying that as we live, we don't conform to the ways of the world. We still walk with Christ. Follow his footsteps. Whatever he has taught us to do, that's what we'll do. If the world disagrees with it, it's the world to conform to us not us to conform to the world. We should be forceful enough to take it by force that this is the way, this is the truth, and we'll stick with the truth. If you want, come and join us, but we will not join you. It's, it's the same way like uh, when, the, uh, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were, were being thrown into the fire and said, we will not do it. We will not do it. For our God has the power to save us. And if he, if he does not, we will not love to us. God did come through for them, did he? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how much more will he do it for us? Mm -hmm. He'll still come through for us. Yes. In, this, in this God asks us not to conform to the ways of the world, but to lead holy and blameless lives through, through so that he will receive glory. As, 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 as he says in Matthew 5.14, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it in a bowl. Instead, they put it on, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine for <coughs> others. That way, that we may see your good deeds and, and glorify your Father in heaven. By through our good deeds, God receive all the glory. If we display the fruit, the fruit, the fruits of the spirit, the world around us will be able to see that truly these people are different, and truly their God must be must be different. So the only way then they'll conform to our ways. If they don't see a difference, they'll be the actual the, the, the Lord. You see, the Bible teaches us that. His name is blasphemed because of us. Because we claim to, to know the Lord, but we live like everybody else. If you live like everybody else, they say, what's the difference? I'd rather live this way than be, a, than, than, than be like them. Because they claim to know the Lord, but they're still as evil as us. So when we live as Christ has required us, if we are to become the children of God, sons and daughters, then that means we must display the qualities of Christ. We must walk like Christ. He walked blameless, even though he walked amongst us. He, was, he, he took human form, came from his glory, took human form, so that just to show us that it can be done as a human being with flesh and blood. He went through all the same feelings we do. Like even at one point he told the Lord, if it's in your will, may this cup be taken away from me. He was afraid. He was afraid of what was coming. But God gave him the grace. And God still gives us the grace. Gives us, even, in this, even to this very day, waking up in the morning is by grace. And he gives us the grace to endure the world and receive his glory at the end of it all. <coughs> us, the Lord will receive glory. Through us, the Lord will, people will exalt him for the works that he's done in us. If they can see us being different, then they'll glorify our God, which is, I would, which is a, to me, it's an honor. It's an honor for, for God to receive glory on my behalf, because for, for wherever God has received glory for his people, he has blessed them. Mm -hmm. Clearly, for even in the Bible, everybody who God has received glory for, he has blessed them. Even when, when 
even when faced with temptations and everything of this world, the people who stuck with the Christ, the people who stuck with God, God blessed their ways. I'm reminded of Joseph. Even in the face of Potiphar's wife, he said, I cannot do such thing. I cannot do such thing. And by that, God saved the glory. And he blessed the work of his hands. Anything he touched, it was blessed. It, it, the, entire, the entire country of Egypt at the time was blessed because of one man. Because of one man who stood and said, I will not do such a thing. I will stick to the ways of the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. And when we become sons, God's sons and daughters, will he not come to our aid in the times of need and richly bless us? Will he not? Matthew 7, 9 reads, Which of you, if, if your son asks for bread, will give him a stool? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? How much more? Yeah, it's true. We give, we give good gifts to our children. We, we want the best for them. How much more will God do for us when we become his sons and children? Because he says, he, 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 has, he has told us that if we be separate and we, we don't do anything evil, he will receive us and we will become his sons and daughters. Once you become a son, if God, God, when God deems you his son or his daughter, will he not give you good gifts? Will he not bless the work of your hands? That's the reason why we toil. We toil every day because we've decided that God gives us a way. Because even he teaches us that the birds of the air do not, they do not toil, they do not work. And they sleep hungry. But we as Christians sleep hungry. Why? It's because we have not fully embraced the ways of the Lord as he has entrusted us. If, if, we, if we embrace it as he as by his instruction, will he not provide for us? Will he not, not provide for our children? Well, God is just. Continue. Uh, brothers and sisters, this world is not our home. Yeah. We are merely passing. Mm -hmm. It's here for a short time and it's done. Our home is in heaven, in Jesus Christ. We are his ambassadors. And the way I understand ambassadors do, they represent the desires of their home country. An ambassador, let's, say, let's take an, an example of a Kenyan ambassador. He does not represent the wishes of the American government. He represents the wishes of the Kenyan government as a representative to the American government. And the same thing for us. We are fully sold out. We are fully sold out to Christ. Even as Paul says that he considers his living not his anymore. Everything is for Christ. We represent Christ's wishes. We represent his commands. We represent his ways. And when you represent Christ, you ought to act like him. Act like him in every way. So that the world may see it and glorify him and also turn towards him. Because he came to, he, came, he bought us for a price. A huge price. For that matter. And the reason why he bought us for that price is so that we can be turned towards him. His, his desire is the world, for the entire world, not to be doomed, but to be saved. So that, and how can it be saved if not through us? We, 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 you, me, him, we the Christians are the ones to save the world. 
through our deeds, through our actions, through our prayers. Yeah. Anyway, as we go through our, as we go about our daily lives, let's remember our covenant with God and His mandate for this world. This, uh, for me, this message encouraged me and also reminded me that to be, to become a son of God. I will need to follow him. I will need to go through my ways and see if I truly represent Christ and do I walk in his likeness? Because Christ tells us that everybody who wants to come after me must pick up his cross and follow him. To me the cross is the, it's the temptation I go through every day. It's the, it's the the price I pay for living a holy life is the price I pay for for not doing taking shortcuts every here and there. And when we do that, God promises that He will receive us, He will make us His sons and daughters, and He will richly bless us. Yeah. And if, if truly God has saved us, we will, we will turn around the community. We will turn out the, around the world. And we will show them that Christ is the truth, the way, and the life. Through him, only through Him are we saved. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you. God bless you as you go through the week and may God speak to your hearts may God remind you of, this, of the mandate that you have in him and may God provide for you and open ways bring about people in your life who will make you a better Christian who will encourage you to live a holy and blameless life before God Amen, Amen. Amen.